Hey everyone, Brian here from Exact IT Solutions. I wanted to come at you with a quick video about a uh, article that you're probably going to see in mainstream media news where FireEye Cybersecurity, a uh, major uh, cybersecurity uh, company, one of the top uh, cybersecurity companies based on revenues and size and customer base. Um, they work a lot with the federal government and have a lot of federal government and federal government contractor uh, accounts where they provide uh, some level of cybersecurity services to these firms. Um, and it's been reported that their tools that they use have been uh, stolen or compromised in what they believe is a state-sponsored cyber uh, attack. Um, and basically what these tools are is uh, they're known, you'll see a term called red team tools. Now in cybersecurity, uh, there's uh, this uh, thing that's been created where um, there's blue team and red team. And blue team is, is basically the guys on the inside trying to prevent attacks from happening. It's remediation or it, it's uh, vulnerability uh, remediation and, and things like that that happen internally on the network to prevent a cyber attack. And then cybersecurity companies or teams will have um, a red team, so to speak, where they are the quote unquote bad guys or acting as if they were bad guys um, and trying to penetrate the network and get into the network and find any weaknesses or vulnerabilities within the, um, the network of that company or in this case, FireEye's clients. FireEye had a team of red team professionals that would try to basically break into their clients' networks um, to try to find any vulnerabilities that a hacker might have. And this is a very common strategy uh, with cybersecurity companies and cybersecurity uh, professionals who do this on a daily basis. Uh, and it appears that uh, FireEye has built tools to help their red team employees um, discover these vulnerabilities and try to carry out these attacks. And apparently, uh, according to the article at FireEye, uh, their um, red team tools uh, have been stolen. And uh, somebody was on their network for a very long time and was able to figure all this stuff out and figure out what they had access to. Um, and they believe it was a state-sponsored attack just because of the way that the operation was uh, undertaken. Um, so it, it's um, it, it, they were very obscure in, in how they went about the network and they used techniques and exploits that from what it sounds, and if I read between the lines, I believe that there's things that are being used that aren't very well known uh, out there. So um, FireEye has brought in the FBI, they brought in Microsoft, um, who basically have analyzed what has happened here. And I think they're all in agreement that this was a more advanced attack by uh, a very well-funded, what they believe a, a state-sponsored attack. Um, so that leads you to believe, you know, who was it? Who, you know, there's only, you know, a handful of companies that that can carry out something, or sorry, handful of countries that can carry out something like this. Um, and it's not going to be, you know, a European country. They're typically our allies and wouldn't do something like this and have no interest in trying to gain access to these tools or the networks of the clients of FireEye. Um, so, you know, do some research and go out there and figure out who the who the big state sponsored uh, hacking countries are and who use um, hacking groups as an extension of their their military, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll pretty much figure out what those who those countries are. Um, but this goes to show you folks and why I wanted to do this video today that um, you're talking about one of the top cybersecurity companies in the world and they've been breached. And um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands out there that everyone's a target, number one, as we talk about on this channel all the time. But even the best cybersecurity measures, tools, um, just the nature of technology 
you cannot guarantee that somebody won't get in. Um, a lot of cybersecurity is predicated on the fact that we know certain things or certain vulnerabilities exist within a operating system or a piece of software. And it's very well possible that, you know, let's just take Windows because that's a big target. You know, if you have state sponsored uh, actors who are basically being paid military and it's we do this in the United States. So it's not like, you know, there's these other bad countries out there that are doing this. We do this in the United States as well they will have people who are hackers or engineers that will try to find exploits within uh, the Microsoft Windows operating system. Let's, let's take that as an example. And when they find those exploits, they start testing them and using them and seeing what they can do with them. And they don't disclose them to Microsoft or the security community so they can be handled properly. They use them to further their agenda and 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 carry out these attacks. So a lot of this is knowledge, is knowledge that a certain tool exists that's out in the wild or there's a vulnerability that's out in the wild. And if we don't know about a vulnerability because somebody's found it, they've done the research and they've discovered it, but they didn't disclose it to anybody, um, that's how these things happen even if you hire the best cybersecurity company in the world. Nobody can protect you uh, from an attack 100%. We can, you can reduce your risk, but the chances of you reducing your risk to where it's 100% are pretty much slim to none. You can get it very close, very, very close, but there's always gonna be that unknown. Um, obviously, the bigger your company is, the more uh, uh, prevalent your clients are like in FireEye's case the bigger target you're going to have on your back because people want to get to the mothership so they can you know get to everybody else and you know in this case FireEye is a pretty big company with a lot of clients and if you can get into their network and hit them you could potentially have access to a lot of uh, high profile governments and companies that do business with FireEye. So um, that's all I wanted to talk about today, folks. I hope you learned a lot from what we had to share here with this FireEye uh, incident. Um, we will keep you updated as we learn more. Um, we are looking to uh, do some research on this particular event. The, the good news is, is that FireEye has released the signatures for the tools that are out there. So most, uh, I would expect by at some point today, pretty much every antivirus endpoint protection uh, service is going to have these signatures uh, within their database. So if these tools are being used on your network, technically, uh, your if you have good endpoint security, it will be flagged. Um, that was the first thing that they did responsibly here was FireEye. I have to give a lot of credit to FireEye CEO. He came right out with a blog post and let everyone know that this was going on. And then they also released the information to the security community about the tools. So um, if any uh, bad actor decided to use these tools within somebody's network, hopefully your endpoint protection or whatever you have on your system will recognize that that software is now on the system and flag it. So that's where we're at today as of December 9th, 2020 with the FireEye uh, uh, cybersecurity breach. And uh, we will bring you updates as we learn more. Maybe we'll find out who the state sponsored uh, actors were. Maybe we'll find out how they got in. Um, we'll learn all that soon and uh, we'll bring it to you as soon as we know. So take care everyone, be safe out there.